Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, so tell us about the different, now that we're in that section, tell us a little about, there are these seven rays and each of them, each of the seven has kind of a different expression of itself. Can you tell us a little about the seven rays and uh, how it expresses itself? It, 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 I'll give it, a, you know, a kind of a nutshell version. It's a very complicated uh, paradigm. But so the bottom line is if we take um, divine energy, mm-hmm. we can subdivide it into seven equal parts. Mm-hmm. Numbers one through seven are equally important. So mm-hmm. it's important for people not to think, oh, well, you know, I'm more important if I'm a ray four versus a right. ray two. Not so. You know, it, it, it's like... Yeah, the uh, numerical rankings don't mean anything about the importance. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So ray one is actually the hardest ray to carry off. Okay. It's the least common soul ray on our planet because it's so difficult. It's the change agent. Mm-hmm. It's it's the person. The example I always give when I'm teaching is it's the Steve Jobs of the computer industry. In the beginning, when Steve Jobs started creating a new type of intuitive-based computer, people thought he was a little bit crazy. Right. But he changed the computer industry. Right. But yeah. he didn't do it alone. So right. the bottom line is he needed other people with him whose soul ray was not first ray to support his process. Right. So number two... Wait, I want to go back to uh, number one, though, because I I look at myself, I'm like, I'm not Steve Jobs. I mean, I'm not delusional, nor do I have, like, delusions of wanting. I mean, I don't even, like, I have to be as important as Steve Jobs, but I do feel like part, like, every lifetime after another, I try to change things. So I don't really know if I'm a one, which is because I'm trying to change things, or two, which is the one that you're about to explain, but I wanted to explain the two, but it's it's hard, I think, when you're reading through these, but... um, Yes. I think yes. also with one, when you listen to it, you're like, well, I'm not, you know, the, you describe this person as the leader of change. Well, you know, I'm a, I am don't consider myself a leader, but I am, I really am trying to uh, shoot for change. So, don't know. So, so, think about it, CJ, at all different levels. I use Steve Jobs simply mm-hmm. because most people know who Steve Jobs was and what he did. But you can be a change agent in your family. You can be a change agent in, um, let's just say you're a teacher Mm -hmm. in a public school. You could be a change agent, you know, all the teachers come together to have meetings and, and, you know, they deal with curriculum and and discipline and all of that. So, no, you you can be a Ray One and not be as, you know, prominent a person as Steve Jobs. But again, Ray One is the least common. Okay. So there are not a lot of Ray 1s on the planet. Okay. Um, so Ray 2, yeah. um, very different Ray. Mm-hmm. The Ray 2 person wants to bring out the best in everyone else. Mm-hmm. They want to support everyone else to do their very best. Mm-hmm. They're not about change. They're really about support. So. No. <laughs> But, you know, it makes it hard unless people know a bit about some of their past lives. Because, because your ray, you see my hand, is the common thread that, mm-hmm. you know, weaves through all of our lives. So mm-hmm. in order to figure out our soul ray, it helps to know some of our past lives. Right. Yeah. And a lot of my past lives have been trying to, like, change things around. But then a lot of them have been as clergy, either fighting clergy, being clergy, um, you know, hiding in the woods away from clergy. Right. <laughs> I mean, all of them have that kind of arc to them, which is interesting. So that's how I thought, well, maybe two, but I care about supporting people, but that's not my primary goal. Like, I support them because I want them to change, <laughs> sadly. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, that, interesting. That's totally fine. That's a good explanation okay. about you. And how yeah. about three? Okay, so three, and three I can easily describe because I happen to be... You're a three, right? I happen to be a three. So, Ray three is someone who is very mental, Mm -hmm. wants to learn and learn and learn and learn and learn and meld together what they learn. Mm -hmm. So, you might call them a scholar, but it doesn't mean they're smarter than anybody else. Mm -hmm. It just means they're focused on learning as a predominant aspect lifetime to lifetime to lifetime Mm, interesting okay because and again i think well i like to learn but i guess the key is that you say lifetime after lifetime you're focused on learning and the only way you would know going back to what you had said 
is if you looked at all your lifetimes, which I've done okay. a lot of them. So I'm like, yeah, okay, that's not true for me. <laughs> okay. okay. Good. But, but Good. for you, when you actually, because I'm sure you've looked at your past lives, have you had many past lives where like I'm learning, you know, I'm a scholar or I'm a student. When you look yes. at your past lives, yes. you have that art. many lives. It's why I love to teach. Mm. Now that you don't have to be a Ray three to be a good teacher, but many um, effective teachers are Ray Ray threes because mm. uh, they love to just learn. I mean, I could sit on the internet and Google forever, <laughs> and what I want to do is learn more and more yeah. and more. Yeah. So, you know, there's never enough learning, at least for me. So I'm kind of this crazy person that went to grad school in three or four different programs. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't mean I'm smarter. It just means I like to learn. Yeah, I so like to learn, too. So, but I think, it, but, but I like to, I could look at this life and say, I love to learn. I'm reading, you know, like two or three books every week about the subject, various subjects. But I can't say if when I look at my other lifetimes, I'm like, yeah, I really wasn't learning anything. <laughs> Yeah. lifetime yeah. okay um ray number four artist so mediators ray, ray four, four and i always want to make sure listeners understand you know ray four is the pivot point you know mm. one two three and then there's four um five six seven and mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that one two three are better and five six seven are worse but ray four is the balancing agent a little bit like libra energy if people mm-hmm. know astrology so Ray four is the harmonizer. Mm-hmm. Ray four is the, the balancer or the balancing of elements that might be a great mediator, someone who mm-hmm. works in the field of mediation. It also might be um, an excellent interior decorator that knows mm-hmm. design elements. Interesting. Could be a gourmet chef, could be a feng shui specialist, um, or could be someone in a family that is helping right. the family balance out relationships. Right, and then the, in the book, I think you said in the, what you're pivoting to and from is one is kind of more air, spirit-based, and the one is more kind of grounded soul. Is that what the pivot is? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I guess I wouldn't exactly yeah. put it that way. Um, one, two, and three, uh, to make it slightly more complicated, raise one, two, and three, um, essentially step down divine energy to bring it to the planet. Mm. And one hands it to two, and two hands it to three. Oh, fascinating. Yes, okay. It, it, it's a fascinating topic. Then four is is Isn't simply it? ready to harmonize the other half of the three, or the other, you know, half of the, the six out of oh. seven. That oh, makes sense. Oh, interesting, yeah. So ray, ray four could also be someone who is just into... Um, um, harmonizing anything, you know, mm-hmm. again, whether it's your home or your family or your children um, or your great cook and you know how to harmonize, mm-hmm. you know, flavors and textures. Mm-hmm. And that sort of mm-hmm. Then Ray 5 is bringing actually three energy and grounding it. So Ray 5 mm-hmm. is mental. Mm-hmm. Ray 5 is the strategy logistics person. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, it's like someone who says, well, I'll plan um, Thanksgiving dinner and we'll all do this as a potluck. The Ray right. 5 is going to do that. Ray 5 is going to say, well, CJ, you bring the pumpkin soup and so-and-so, you bring the mashed potatoes yeah. and, you know. Or it's a military um, strategist who strategizes military action. Yeah. yeah. Hmm, I yeah. could see myself being a Ray 5, too, when I looked at it, but not sure because it's it's someone who's really just about getting stuff done they're all about operationally moving forward which i can't look at all my lives and go that wasn't the reason i was doing it right do you know what i mean it wasn't the intention for making things more efficient or process oriented or that wasn't the intention that's why these things are so interesting because i think you can read every single one of these and say well i'm that like i care about studying and i i'm a, i studied mediation so you know but i think it's really like it, it really is the past lives that i think help you go well when i really look at these lives the intention wasn't to learn or it wasn't and to to make things more efficient it's really in my case about change but in your case it's about learning right it's a different kind that's of right. art that's right. Okay, That's right. and how about six and seven? So, so six and seven. Um, six is actually two, if you will, on steroids. And <laughs> what I mean by that is two is about remembering, um, uh, bringing the best out of everyone. 
Six is bringing the best out of everyone and putting that into community that works oh, well together. Interesting. So six is about, you know, how can we work together and, uh, you know, Susan, you be the best and John, you be the best you can be and so on and so forth. And it's really about devotion to a community, mm. devotion to a cause mm. and work, working together. <laughs> yeah, so that's, it's interesting because so like the five, six, and sevens feel like people who are going to materialize something on this plane, whereas that's one, right. two, and three would have all the ideas that are floating out there, right? Okay, that's, a good... that's interesting. Okay, and how about seven? Seven, seven is like the alchemy of it all. So seven really brings one through six together. Alchemy means, you know, melding elements and letting them create something anew by bringing all the elements together. Right. So seven is the Merlin energy. It's the, the, the mysticism of understanding um, who we are as souls and why we're here and merging mm -hmm. all the energy of one through six. Ah, that's my husband. That's my husband for sure. Because I looked at him like, yep, that's him. <laughs> okay, and how does how does knowing this, so now knowing that you're three, or perhaps I'm a one, I don't know, but how does knowing this information help you in your day-to-day -day life? Well, I think basically it helps you accept who you are. It mm -hmm. helps you say, this is my tr my strength. This mm -hmm. is why, you know, Linda kept going to school or what whatever. Right. It helps me comprehend me and not say, um, well, I should be different. Because we are who we are, you know, it's like if I was raised speaking English, and I mean, I really respect people who are multi-fluent, so I don't mean to minimize that, but I was raised, if I was raised speaking English and didn't learn any other language, mm -hmm. why would I think I could be highly capable in the French language? It's like, well, if I'm a Ray 3, my strongest suit is not going to be Ray 1. It's going to be Ray 3. Mm -hmm. So it just it puts a fact on the table. Right. Now, a couple of other quick comments, CJ, to help broaden this picture. Right. Or maybe, maybe to muddy it a little bit more <laughs> as well. Mm -hmm. um, two things. We have a soul ray that doesn't change lifetime to lifetime. But we have, or and we have, I always hate the word but, but I use it so much. And we have a personality ray. And the personality ray changes lifetime to lifetime because in order to evolve as a soul, our human personality has to be, um, we have to become competent in all seven energies at the personality level. Ah, okay, got it. So there's another seven energies at the personality level. Well, they're the same seven energies. It's just that like for you, in order to evolve, and, and, and one of the reasons we're evolving is to also become a spiritual guide, to become capable as, as a spiritual guide. If you're reaching that level and getting close to that, you've had a, a personality in one or more lives as Ray 1, as Ray 2, as ah. Ray 3, as Ray 4, because they're all important aspects of how we need to operate. Right, that's how come some of them have a kind of relatedness feeling, like I've done that or I've done that before in past lives, but I think it's almost like you were saying, it's what what was the end goal that you're trying to achieve in the end, you know? I see, interesting. Okay, now you mentioned a new idea about soul guides, which is that, you know, once we actually go up the various colors or levels, um, you can achieve, you can be a soul guide. So what exactly. is this idea of a soul guide? And then I thought interesting in your book too, you're saying that there are some people who are soul guides but come to incarnate in a body. Because I always think of soul guides as just being spirit people who I'm actually yeah, talking to my spirit guides. And but they can actually be real life human beings here on this plane of, on on this earth. Which yes. Me. So so the bottom line is we have more than one soul guide or spiritual guide, whatever those terms I think are synonymous. So we have a team of guides, and mm -hmm. the more involved we are, usually the bigger our team. Mm -hmm. So our guides are always souls somewhat more evolved than we are. Thank goodness. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or how else could they guide? Us? Yes. Exactly. So at any one time, and, and you know, when I say all these things, CJ, it's like, well, why does Linda sound like she knows what she's talking about? This comes from regression after regression after regression. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't decide these things. I've heard them from client after client. Right, after like client. observing the data, right? Observing That's the right. data and saying, this is how could all these people who don't even know each other come up with the same story? Correct, okay. correct. So we always have a main guide at any one time. It's kind mm -hmm. of like... Um, in any one lifetime or in any one time in our life or both? Um, it can change. In, so I think the answer to your question, if I understand what you're asking, is that during a lifetime, your main guide could shift. Right. When I'm five years old, 15, 20, 30, 50, they may have different guides. My main life guide, my main bud is going to be right. different. You know, okay. think about your team of guides almost like a, a triangle mm -hmm. where at the point of the triangle up at the top, you have a leader or a coordinator of mm -hmm. the guides and that's your main guide. Mm -hmm. Your main guide usually, not always, but often is no longer incarnating. Mm-hmm and is usually the most evolved guide you have. So wow. I, have a, I have a main guide, I, I, I'm familiar with working with that main guide, but in my triangle, you know, kind of think about playing pool and putting all the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the balls into that rack that you put it in, um, along, you know, ignoring the point for a minute, all those other balls are your other guides. You mm -hmm. can have angelic guides, mm -hmm. you can have guides that are in body, as you just mentioned, you can have guides that what, you know, like your grandmother, who perhaps guides, yeah. you yeah. adored when you, you know, and yeah. died when you were 12, that could be, that soul could be one of your guides. Ah, okay, and one of the things I find, and we have a couple minutes, so I want to ask you quickly about uh, how you know when your guides are communicating to you, and one of the things that I thought was really interesting you say sometimes it's through feeling anxious or an emotion which I always think about it being one of those things that I have to get into a meditative state to talk to my guide but my guide is actually communicating with me regardless if I do that is that right that is totally right and how, do totally the, right. how does the emotions and anxiety piece work in terms of how would a guide help steer me in the right direction through my emotions or anxiety well I think we have to think about intuition so our guides work through our intuition. That's mm -hmm. our telepathic mode that we all have. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, um, so our guides come to us in various ways. Some of us are fairly clairvoyant. We almost feel like we get mental images. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we'll even sense, oh, you know, here's my main guide, and my main guide, you know, tends to have this mental image that my guide shows me, and it's um, a Native American medicine woman, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes, intuitively, our guides come through our mental images, that's mm -hmm. clairvoyance. Sometimes they come to us through clairaudience, we almost mm -hmm. feel like we're being spoken to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, as you just said, CJ, they, they come to us through our emotions. So mm. sometimes I'll start feeling a little bit agitated. And because I've learned that it works this way, it's like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe my guide's trying to get my attention. Maybe my guide wants me to shift my attitude, but my guide is increasing the energy that I'm feeling in my body, mm. and I feel that as anxiety. Mm. I would have never thought that in a million years. It just feels like a human thing versus something that my guide may be. That's fascinating to me. <laughs> I totally used to interpret just the way you're interpreting. Yeah, I'm just pissed off because I've had a long day, I didn't get enough sleep, blah, blah, blah. I've never gone, I've never added to that, ah, maybe my guide is trying to say that to me. I'm going to add that because I do have some, I, I, I'm not, that's not my strongest suit, but I can feel things, uh, yeah. other people's feelings sometimes. I don't know how to explain it, but okay, got it. So those are the different ways. So then there's clear sentience, clear audience, clairvoyance. How, there's how, two more. So let me just throw in very quickly two more. Yeah. Um, Often our guides speak to us through symptoms in our body, mm. um, a twitch in our eye, mm -hmm. a ringing in our ear, um, a pressure in the small of our back. Mm. Something physiological at times is the way our guides are trying to get our attention. Yeah. Yeah. Then last but absolutely not least, and this is the one that I think a lot of people have trouble uh, trusting, sometimes our guides come to us through our own thought process. Right. We think the thoughts are being created in our mind, but no, it's our guide speaking to us through our thoughts. I know, that's the scariest part, right? It's like, I thought I came up with that great idea. Actually, it was your guide. 
<laughs> we've been talking to Dr. Linda Bachman, and we've been uh, talking about her book, The Evolving Soul. Real quickly, tell us about what you're, are you going to be in East West Bookstore talking about the book? Will people be able to have an, a, a regression or experience on the Saturday event? Tell us what the difference is on the Friday and Saturday event. So Friday night, for the most part, is a lecture, a presentation yeah. about a lot of these topics, expanding on these topics. Then Saturday is a four-hour workshop mm -hmm. where I'll both teach, but we're going to do some experiential work together. Uh, people are going to be able to dig into understanding how to connect with their guides, how to understand their soul ray. As much as we can cram into four hours, <laughs> we're going to do um, this coming Saturday at East West Bookshop. Now, I will be guiding individual regressions um, mm -hmm. while I'm in the Seattle area. So oh, if goody. anyone wants to contact me, easiest way to reach me is uh, through my website, mm -hmm. which is, um, these words are all run together. It's www.raven, like the bird, mm -hmm. heart, like the heart in our chest, center, ravenheartcenter.com. People or I'm Linda at RavenHeartCenter.com. People okay. can contact okay, me. Okay, cool. So are you going to be doing those sessions in East West Bookstore or someplace else? I'm going to be doing those um, where I'm staying so that I have private and quiet space. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much. What wonderful piece of work. So we've again, the evolving soul, Dr. Linda Backman. Make sure to sign up for either an individual re regression, an experiential workshop, or also to hear the lecture and learn more about this book. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, CJ. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Sorry we ran over. I got. I know that you've got to go, so I'll hang up so you can go to your next phone call. Thank you so much. I'm gonna. I, I think I'm gonna try to take your class, or okay. actually do a, pers a, a regression because I have a tightness in my jaw that I think. It's still related to regression, so. Ah, interesting. Well, yeah. I'd love to meet you, work with you. Yeah, I'll go to your whatever. website and sign up for a regression session. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, Take bye. Bye-bye. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.